Hi everybody, Kat here. I've been painting these uh, this these mushrooms that from this photo I found and decided to turn my camera on because I thought you'd find it interesting uh, to see what watercolor white uh, it can be used for aside from mixing it with your colors. Even though it has very, it's very opaque, the watercolor white isn't like PH Bronner's white, a uh, PH Martin's white. Uh, it is still has translucent qualities to it. So uh, throughout the painting, you'll see how this works so well for the mushrooms. Um, as you can see, the background, uh, I, I just turned my camera on while I was doing it. I just pre-wet everything. I'm throwing in some greens and a bit of uh, uh, Naples yellow because I, it's, they're not, it's not very important to me. So I don't spend a lot of time on the background. The mushrooms are the stars of this show. So these are the colors I used aside from the watercolor white that I own. Most sets have these colors. If you don't have Naples yellow, you can always use yellow ochre. It's fairly close. Um, so I'm just wetting down the trunk and because I want the mushrooms to be the stars of the show, I'm keeping this trunk very soft. So it's going to very subtly blend into the background and which you'll see later. So I'm covering the whole tree, even where I drew out the mushrooms, I'm covering those too. It's quite watery, so it's going to dry a lot lighter. And I still, I want this color. If you look at my palette, I've mixed enough burnt sienna into the ultramarine blue to make this brownie color, but I put more burnt sienna. So it has, it does have a slight mushroomy color to it which I was quite pleased with. And I'm, I'm adding, trying to add more brown around my drawing. So I'm now I'm trying to leave out the mushroom drawings. Not, not exactly because this is all wet, but I don't want them to end up too, too brown. And I'm using my brush that's I don't know what it's called it's like a it's sort of like a flat brush that has uh, bristles missing so it, it, it can kind of give you this it's great for grasses and fur and things like that so I just thought I would do this for the background so that it would be a quick job of it I I don't want the background to take anything away from the mushrooms and you'll and you'll soon see why it it it, it, it was a good choice you could always make regular leaves if you don't want to use this. Uh, the picture has, it's like in a pine uh, forest or something. So I tried to emulate that. This is my Van Gogh white in a tube, but this would work if you were using white from your palette, any palette would do. As long as it's not very watery. So even if you don't add a lot of water, this will dry with a translucency so you you'll be able to see you're never going to get that that stark white that you get when you use a uh, bleed proof white for example or an acrylic or a gouache and with these mushrooms this is precisely what i wanted and so i'm just outlining each mushroom right now and um You'll, you'll see as the white dries, it's going to fade quite, quite a bit and it takes on a quite a, a natural look to it. So I just keep going around all of the mushrooms in this drawing and I will have to do this several times as the painting uh, progresses. But as you can see with the, for the upper left, it's already drying and it has that mushroomy kind of color to it, which is exactly why I chose this color background and the waterproof, the uh, watercolor white. 
Often people use the watercolor white to mix, say, with a red to get a pastel color. And the colors are, are very pretty, but I try not to use my white to mix with other colors because of how opaque it is. And when you try to get it to, um, when you paint over it, it really, it activates instantly. Um, I wouldn't say that it's chalky, but I can't come up with a better word to describe what happens when you re-wet it. So I only use it when I actually want something to look white or gray or brownie like this. I don't use it when to, to water down a color, like to, to make a color more pale. I always use water to do that. And I'm going around the edges because if you notice in the photo, the edge, the very, very edges of the mushrooms are quite white. So that's where I would like the contrast. So I, I do also do this several times throughout the painting. I go back over the edges and you can still see here that it's drying. It's still a lot more pale. Now, in the centers of these mushrooms, they kind of have like a shell look to them to me. And that's what attracted me to this photo so much. So I put a, I wet it and then I put a little bit of burnt sienna in the center. And then I use my plastic card to make the veins there. I don't know if they're actual veins or if they're sort of like those, um, uh, ridges in a mushroom that you get um, and so and then after I do that I add right in the center I add some of the raw umber like comp like pure raw umber and it kind of bleeds into where I use the plastic card and I do this all the way through the painting, all the way throughout the painting to every single mushroom. <laughs> if you don't have a dark brown, use uh, your ultramarine blue and your uh, burnt sienna and use it with not with less water than usual. I think I'm going to speed up some of the process here. So if you don't like that, I know some viewers don't like when YouTubers speed up, uh, but you can always slow it down if you press the cog wheel on the YouTube window, you can, you can slow it down. This is a very relaxing painting because you do uh, much of the same thing, but each one is in a different direction. And so as you're adding these, these little brown centers, you can see that it gives the mushroom a, a, like a hollowed out sort of shape in the center. So you can kind of see where they're, the core is, where they're growing from. So it's, just enough detail that you have to pay attention but not enough that it keeps you on edge it's not it doesn't make you tense it's very relaxing to do this painting
Right here, I'm adding some sap green uh, to the painting, but I, before I do that, I add a bit of uh, ultramarine blue to it, to, not only to darken it, but to cool it off. And by doing that, it sets the, the, the greenery back and makes the mushrooms come forward more. And I use a lot of water to soften and blend it out. I don't want any hard lines because when you use hard lines, it draws your eyes to it. And I'm only using hard lines around the mushroom so that you are, the focus is, the mush, is on the mushroom. Our, your focus is on the mushrooms. <laughs> I'm sorry, I'm tongue tied today. <laughs> So you see it's fairly watery, easy to blend out. If you go in too thick, it's harder to blend it out with smooth, with smooth edges. And you can be go darker in some areas than others. It just gives it a more natural look. And then I do the same thing to the other side. So I speed this up because you, I'm sure you get what I'm doing. <laughs> and um, there we go. I turn my work because you, you really need to be comfortable when you're doing especially when you're outlining something because if I try to do it backwards it just I just make a mess of things so now with the brown I add some shadows beneath the mushrooms to lift them away from the trunk so they stand out more they don't look like it they're f so flat any longer and I even do between the, in the small spaces, uh, between the cluster of them, because the cluster would block light from the tree because they're so close together. So it stands to reason that the tree would be dark in there. And you can be as detailed as you like with, with the, uh, with the tree trunk but I chose to keep everything soft and um, I wasn't going to fret over the over the tree trunk. I wanted the mushrooms to be more detailed. As I'm sure I probably said 300 times, I'm sorry if I if I've repeated myself. <laughs> so you see just by adding that darker that shadowing, it does lift them off off of the the tree. It makes such a difference. And I just sort of spread it out very lightly and it adds a little bit of depth to the color of the trunk. So once you're happy with that, get your white paint back out and paint the final outlines of each of your mushrooms. You don't have to do each one, but even with this very opaque layer, um, you're going to notice that the, the, the white lightens significantly. So I chose to do, I think every one of them and it stands out a little more against that background. You notice the contrast now between the mushrooms and the background and 
more contrast equals more attention. Your eye is drawn to it right away. So I thought I was finished here, but then after I turned the camera off, I decided to add a very watery blue to the background to set it back even further and causing the mushrooms to come forward and stand out more. So I hope you enjoyed this video, everyone. Thanks so much for watching. If you like this video, please hit that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Happy watercoloring. Bye bye.